Hey everybody, Clay Archer, CEO of DPC Technology, and today I'm going to compare every one of the six different AI Theta cameras. So we've gone ahead and ordered all six of the AI Theta cameras, and we're going to throw them up in a test rig. We're going to test them during the day, we're going to test them during the night, and we're going to figure out what are the differences. I'll tell you a couple of things. First, when we ordered the AI Theta regulars, one came with a dead hub. We had to RMA that, and that took a couple weeks to get that done. You'll see that a couple of the cameras have turrets on them. Those turrets are extra. Those are $29. Take that into consideration. Second of all, we're not using the audio portion of the AI Thetas. It doesn't really work in my use case that I need it. So if you are interested in us doing a review of the audio features of it, just let us know in the comments down below. And if enough of you are interested, we will test that out. Also, they all use the same hub. It doesn't matter which version you're using, whether it's a pro or a regular Theta, whether they're 360 or wide or tele or whatever. One more thing, which is the craziest of all, and I think you big still trying to work out what the sales model is for these six cameras, but you cannot buy individually the Theta wide. The Theta Theta 360 and the Theta Wide come in a kit together with just one hub. You can only use one lens at a time, but you get two of them. If you want a Theta Wide, you have to buy a 360 and a hub and a second hub. Crazy, but true. The Theta Tele you can buy individually and you can buy all the pros individually. The 360 does come in a kit with the hub. It also comes with a ceiling mount. I call it an old work box. Some people call it a new work box, but it's a pre-construction box that you can put in the hard ceiling. The construction company will come in and do the sanding and paint of the drywall and then you just come in and slap in the camera and a little a protective cover and boom you're done and you can also order that mount without buying the kit the pros you can do this kind of a la carte the regular thetas you have to buy in a kit except for the telly so with those things out of the way let's jump right into the review real quick i wanted to go through what you get when you get the full pro kit so uh like i mentioned before you get the camera you get the dryer or the ceiling tile adapter, but you also get this, uh, and I think this is very interesting. It might be of interest to a lot of people. You get this, um, I'll call this a new build kit. And actually it's retrofitable to an old build. If I was in new construction, I would use these, this bigger bracket and, and I would use it in a way, you know, we kind of use these in like new work versus old work. If you're going into a hard ceiling, meaning it's not, uh, it's not ceiling, acoustic ceiling tile, but it's hard plasterboard, a hard drywall. I would use one of these. I would go in ahead of time. I would mount this up and I, it, obviously it's, it's a little bit bigger, but what it lets you do is mount this up into the hole you cut in the drywall and then use your screwdriver to draw these ears down or we'll clamp it tight. You'll put these in pre-construction, let the contractor and the drywall people do their work paint, all that good stuff. And then you'll come in when it's done and just simply put the magnetic cover over it. Uh, yeah, obviously you'll insert the camera first and put the magnetic cover over it. I think this is a really well-designed product. It's really heavy duty. Uh, they have that that release too. You stick the tool in here, goes down here and it pushes that button to release the camera. And if I was going to do a, a full install and a new construction, I would definitely you buy the whole kit and use these for all of my 360 cameras. It's really quite a nice piece of kit. Anyways, I wanted to go through that just in case anybody wanted to know whether to buy them individually or buy them as a kit. This one does in the kit come with that nicer mount. All right, let's jump right in and take a look at the units themselves. So what I have here is the original AI Theta camera in the bullet mount and the AI Theta Pro in the bullet mount. So you can see the size difference between them. The Pro is probably about twice the size as the original. And if I was comparing them, this is probably the size of a, I'd say a size D battery to a size AA battery. You know, it's a little bit shorter than the AA battery, but obviously the original one is very, very small. And this is their corresponding, sold separately by the way, mounts for the a bullet mount. You can see they just slide right in there. They're really simple mount. Basically there's a little key right here. So there's a little uh, button you can push down there. It actually depresses itself when you put it in there and it slides in. There's actually a, a rib down the front of it so that you can only put it in one way. And once you get it right, it slides right in and then that that little button goes into this little indentation here and it clicks in. In the box for the camera itself, there's a little tool that will help you to press that little button and to get it out. So there's that little tool. So let me show you what comes in the kit. And it's the same with the original Theta and the Pros. It comes with the camera itself. It comes with the flush mount kit with a level. Uh, this goes into the drywall into a ceiling tile and this ring will come down and tighten it to the drywall or the ceiling tile and then it comes with a little tool to depress uh, that button. So there's a couple different ways to purchase the system. You could purchase it as an entire kit, which I have, or you could purchase it with each individual part. The kit comes with everything that's in this as well as a brain. It does not come with the bullet. The bullet unit is sold separately. This is $29.99 for either 
the Pro or the original. If you wanted that way, the camera would come with this and then you would buy the AI Theta Hub and the AI Theta Hub comes with the hub itself which has PoE on one side and then it has the connection uh, which is just uh, USB-C to a, the camera and then the USB-C connection to audio if you did want to do audio as well. It's got a little readout on it and it also comes with the USB-C cable that connects the unit to the, uh, the camera and it comes with a mount and some instructions. One of the questions I have about this and we'll get a little bit further into the review is kind of where you would install the mount in construction projects, but simply you just install the mount and then it just clicks onto it. Pretty simple. It also has some feet there if you're gonna lay it on the ceiling tile or whatever you're gonna do with it. You also, instead of buying this piecemeal like this, you could buy an entire kit. I've got an entire kit over here. It has everything that is in this shot. What it does not come with, what is not included, is the turret if you wanted to go to a bullet. One last thing before we get this installed, in the turrets, they come with a metal backing plate to put behind the wall or the ceiling tile. It comes with a uh, hardware to mount it and a Allen key, a star Allen key to, to mount that. The base plate just mounts to this and then the base plate, quite nice little design here. The, the cable will come out of the back of the unit down this little chase and through the foot. And then this bracket just slides right on. Once you've had it mounted, this bracket just slides right in. It covers the whole unit. So you have a really nice looking installation. This will look very clean. I'm a little probably finicky and I'm not quite sure. You have to be pretty good to get everything exactly lined up and I'm not quite sure you're gonna where you're gonna put this, but we'll deal with that a little bit later in the review. I will tell you the feet are interchangeable. So if I take the smaller bullet and I try and use the base plate for the bigger bullet, they both are the same. Basically from the turret down, they're all identical. So without any further rambling, I'm gonna go ahead and get these mounted and we'll take a look and see what they look like. All right, let's jump right in and start looking at the cameras. So what I've got here is all six cameras up. You can see in the top, I've got the AI Theta Pro Wide, the Pro Tele, I've got the Theta Tele Regular, the Theta Wide, and the two 360s, uh, Pro and 360. I've got them labeled, so when I roll over, you can see the, the label for each one of them. I also have the name burned into the image. That doesn't show up, the burned in image doesn't show up on the 360s when I've got them de-warped. So you can see they're actually really good looking cameras for the most part. So what are the differences? What's the difference between the Theta Pro Wide and the regular? theta wide well the first thing right off the bat you're going to notice on the non-pro versions is that they are in this kind of four by three format whereas the pro versions are in this regular kind of 16 by nine format where they fill the screen i don't know if those are the exact ratios but that's what they feel like to me that's the first difference the other thing that you'll notice right off the bat between the two if i go in on these on the tellies you can see that there's just more contrast in this image it's handling light and dark much better than the non-pro version so you look in the lake back here so this is the lake and you can see the reflections of the buildings across the lake pretty well actually i mean it's really nice you can see the kind of a little bit of a breeze that's going and there's a little Little bit of a ripples on the lake looks really good and also notice down here the eye chart that i have you know you can see down to i would say you're the second to the last line you can read probably the third or last line you can read well which which is nice but you'll notice that when i go in the non-pro that the resolution is actually the same if not even a little bit better a couple things jump right off the page i mean i almost could read that last line on the non-pro where it was it was difficult to do it on the pro but what you're going to notice pretty quickly is if you look back off in the distance at the lake, it is completely blown out. So you can't see any detail in it and you can't see any ripples on it. You can't see the reflections on it. Really different there. And you can also see that there's just less contrast in this image. It's much more kind of milky looking, but the detail in it is really good. One other big obvious difference here, especially when you're looking at the tellies, is the angle of uh, of the tellies. But the 16 by nine there is actually just kind of sort of cutting things off. I can barely see from one side of the cuticles to the other. Where all the uh, the Theta Pro telly, I'm getting that extra bit of side to side image there or field of view. That is really nice. I think if I was saying, you know, which one's gonna be right in the right location, if I was trying to look at something with the telly and I didn't really care about contrast, I didn't really care about the field of view being a little bit wider let's just say i was looking at a display case or something i wanted to have some security on this regular theta i think would be more than enough and the detail on it is is pretty nice 
So where I think that I would use the Pro is if I really needed more detail, if I was looking off in the distance, if I know there's a window where there's gonna be direct harsh sunlight and I wanna see something on the other side of that, or if I just want a little bit more contrasty image altogether, I think that this image is the nicer image. And the same holds true if you're looking at the wides. So this is the wide. If you excuse the mess and you take a look at the image again in the background, obviously this is a much wider view, so you're not gonna get as much detail in the, that background, but I can still see the lake and I can still see that there's a reflection in it. Oh, it's not as clear as it is in the other one, but it is a pretty nice image. You can see the width here. It's pretty wide. I'm going, not quite getting the fourth TV in there and I'm getting into the middle of the wall on the side. Um, and you see here, pretty similar width. I think what this one is doing more is I'm getting more up and down. So if you see that there's a white noise speaker here, you can see next to the power cable here in the ceiling. You can see uh, into the the top of the ladder below where I've got the rig set up. So if I go back here, I can still see the top of the ladder here pretty much the same, but I'm not seeing that as much of that speaker in front of me. I'm not seeing as much as the, of the ceiling. So although the Theta regular is square, I think you're not losing a ton of width. You're using, losing a little bit, but you're also gaining some height in the image. Again, these cameras are the same megapixels, so the image isn't that much different as far as quality, but the contrast and the kind of the dynamic range of the image is pretty strikingly different between the two of them. So again, you know, where, where would I put these? I think on this one, I'm leaning a little bit more towards the Pro. I think that Pro is probably worth a little bit of a premium that you're charging for it. But I honestly, I think it's a margin call. It may be up to you if you want a more vertical image that the regular one may be more appropriate for you. So I'm gonna go into the, the 360s. Really nice job on the 360s. I think honestly, in this lineup, I think these 360s are gonna be really awesome for somebody that wants to have a completely discreet installation. The flush mounts of these is really nice. We deal with a lot of new building construction um, and we deal with architects, we deal with our contractors and interior designers. And I think that the interior designers in particular would really like the look of this. I'm thinking maybe an optometrist that has a bunch of frames on display, doesn't want to be kind of overtly having cameras all over them, wants to make the patients comfortable as they pick out their frames, but also wants to be able to make sure that people aren't uh, walking away with frames. Any kind of professional, a dentist, a doctor would really like these and obviously uh, in retail i think they'll be they'll be great especially where you know some of these cameras even though they they are small and they're discreet the more discreet the better and i think the interior designers are really gonna like this back to the image quality itself you know obviously because this you're doing a deep warping there is a little bit an interpolation here this is obviously wider on the Pro than it is on the, the regular 360. You're getting a little bit of a interpretation of it, but with the right solution being the same, honestly, I don't think there's much in it in these two different ones. Again, the contrast, a little bit better contrast. Uh, you can't quite see over there because I have that clip in front of here, but you can take my word for it. Uh, you know, anything that is got light on it, maybe even just like Houston's monitor there at the front there. You could just see a little bit more detail in the monitor because it's just handling that contrast better. And Daniel's monitors another good example there you know, not getting the, the kind of blown outness that you are it's a margin call uh you know really honestly it's it's what you really your use case there i probably would go for the pros myself i do really like the mounting system that the pro comes with but then again the the smaller theta has a yeah, actually smaller mount and it may even be more discreet so you know your mileage may vary there as with anything on these 360s you can use your your keys to to go back and forth and see what's going on there i've got a crazy rig of every possible camera up here so you can see them all next to each other and what's going on pretty pretty good implementation I, I honestly think versus the ai 360 uh, which is just a bigger unit i think my choice would be the theta before the ai 360 so that's the image quality themselves during the daytime i think it's pretty cut and dry that there's just a little bit better contrast than the pros i think this example of the lake is probably the best example but i don't think there's very much resolution difference between them if any um, there's a little bit different field of view i would base my decision on what was most appropriate for me in my use case if i needed more contrast if I was looking into something bright, I probably would choose the pros over the regulars. Obviously, you're going to save a little bit of money with you going the regular ones. And if you don't need a little bit wider field of view, maybe you don't need the contrast, I think it's a good value. Other than that, really, if you go into the, the, the cameras themselves, there aren't really that many differences between them. They all use the same hub. So there isn't a pro hub and a regular hub. So if you go into the cameras themselves, there's not much uh, there's not much difference. They all are AIs, so they will do all the different detections. So if you go into record mode, they're gonna do person, vehicle, license plate. They're all gonna do that. 
Uh, they're going to do motion smart detections. There's not that much difference between the cameras as far as their technical capabilities, just a function of the hub being the same for each one of them. I will restate again that I have had some issues with the hubs restarting. That isn't, that has been an issue. I had one that had to go back on RMA. Other than that, I think the, the four factor is pretty amazing. I really do like the little bullets. The bullets are great. As far as the qualitative decision inside of the software, I think you're really not going to make a wrong decision to here. During the daytime, I don't think there's really much in it in these cameras. It really is a matter of you want to spend the extra money to get a little bit more dynamic range. There's some qualitative field of view differences, but other than that, they're pretty similar cameras and they work in a pretty similar ways. I think the form factor size difference isn't that big of a deal. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it go ahead and get a little dark in here and we'll see what they, how they perform in low light. Because obviously the big question everybody's going to have is without IR emitters, how is everything going to look at night? Let's fast forward a little bit till the dark time and we'll see how that looks. Just a real quick correction, neither the AI Theta Pro 360 or the AI Theta 360 have license plate detection. Not that you would put these outside, I don't think that's really a big deal, but I said before they all have the same protections and neither of them have license plate detection. They all both have vehicle and person detection, but not license plate detection. All right, let's get to the nighttime. All right, so it's six o'clock on a pitch black winter's night. It is very dark out and uh, let's jump right in. So first thing I will say is our office is probably perfect for these cameras, meaning we do have a few lights on in our office that are on all the time, especially in the front area. You can see this glow coming here. Our reception area has an always on light. We also have one back in this room as well. Well, let me start off by saying there is a really stark difference and I am really impressed. I'm gonna go to the, the theta wide and again, our office does have a lot of like phantom light in it. It's never really pitch black in our office. But what you see here is a pretty good representation of what your eyes would see. This is the regular theta. This is my office back over here. I'm actually filming this and I have a class door. So there's some light leak in here. That's what it looks like out there. But if I walk from this side of the office to that side of the office, I need a flashlight or I would, you know, if there was something on the ground, I would trip over it. That's how dark it is. It's not completely dark, but it's pretty doggone dark in there. And I think this is a pretty fair representation representation of it. You can see across the way, and this is the building across the lake that you saw earlier. It's pretty dark. This eye chart is reflecting some of the reception room area. We also have a glass door in here that has a light on the other side of it that you can see in both of these doors that is, is shining but doesn't turn off. So if the office or place that you are putting this kind of camera in has some phantom light or some lights that are on all the time, you could see that this is almost worthless. You know, there is some value of see so you would see a shadow walk by or whatever. This is pretty typical of what you would see from a non-IR image at night. But then you go to the pro. So that was the wide. I'll, I'll bring up the wide here. And this is absolutely a really usable image. So you can see there's some little lights back there that Sean has a little uh, Christmas theme thing going on in his desk right now that has some lights. And you can see the lights across the way. Again, you can see them over here. But look how much brighter these rooms are in the, 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 the light on the wall here. You can see the ping pong table. Even the, the light on the cubicles is so much stronger. The dynamic range of this camera is just superior. Look at Sean's little Christmas scene there again, and I'll go back over here and you can make it out but barely. You wouldn't even notice that that was the thing in the original one. Same on the zoom. I'm zooming in here and you can see a phone and a, a QNAP over here that's doing some replication or something. Other than that in here, you're not really seeing much. Now, if I go to the, the pro, you get to see a bunch of detail in here. And uh, you know, if somebody snuck in here and took something off of a, a countertop or something, you definitely would be able to see it. That being said, same thing in the, in the 360s. The, the 360 pro is just a lot more sensitive to light than the uh, this is the theta itself. One thing I will say here, let me just do this and, and show you. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on IR. Let's go on a G5 here that's sitting right next to it and I'll turn on IR here. And you can see like an IR camera, the room looks like lit up. But not only do these not have IR emitters, I'll leave that up, they are not IR. So, you know, turning that light on, turning the IR light on the G5 didn't have any effect on it. So if you're thinking, hey, maybe I'll, maybe I'll put some G5 dome around the office and the 360 will pick up the IR from the domes, kind of just 
residual light, which does work sometimes for, for certain cameras where you really light up a room with a bunch of IR emitters. It does not, does not affect this because it's only looking for visual light. Just wanted to go through that really quickly. Not only does it not have IR emitters, it doesn't go into IR mode so that you can't see any uh, IR light, even if it is available. And if you go over to the units themselves, and they're all pretty much the same here because they're using the same brain. There's no IR settings that you're going to change at all like you would in like, let's just say a G5 No if you went into settings, you would get infrared and you would get those settings. You just don't get them at all. But that being said, if you have a, like a reception room where there's always some some lights on or there's a lot of street lights or ambient light, I think this actually is passable. If you need real IR, this isn't the nighttime camera for you. But if you want somewhat passable nighttime performance, I would definitely say that spending a little bit more for the pros is definitely going to be worth it. And you're definitely going to see a usable image with where the regular camera it's just probably not really worth doing at nighttime if that's what you're after. I didn't put these in a really super dark room. Like I will put the IR cameras in a dark room every once in a while just to really test and see what they look like without any phantom light or, you know, residual ambient light. But I don't think that was necessary here because they're just, it's just going to be pitch black. So again, mileage may vary. If you're in a, a darker area, the pros are probably going to fall off at some point as well, but they perform like night and day different to the uh, regular ones. With that, let's go back to the studio. We're going to wrap this up and I'll tell you my final thoughts. All right, so that was a bunch of information. How is that going to help you make your purchasing decision? Let me summarize my thoughts by saying I feel like the pros are obviously going to be your choice if you are in a low light situation. I think that the quality at night of the pros versus the theta regulars is just night and day. I feel like if you need any vision at night in a darker area, the regular thetas are just going to fall flat on you. The pros really did a nice job at night. I really like the image there. And also during the day, I think there's just a more contrasty image. My my preference would be the pros. I also like the 16 by 9 ratio versus the 4 by 3. And I think that the pros would be my purchasing choice there. You know, somebody that's going to buy this is obviously buying it for an aesthetic. They're probably putting it in somewhere where they're willing to pay a small premium for it being as pretty and as discreet as possible. If I'm going to go into these, I probably am going to go to the pros. That being said, if I'm looking for the smallest possible install, I think the thetas are really attractive. You can see in front of you, there are appreciably smaller they're a little bit more discreet. I don't know if it's at this size that it really makes that big of a difference. Where I, I think I might go with the Theta versus the Theta Pro is in the 360, where that mounting kit for the 360 Theta regular is so tiny. So in a ceiling tile, I mean, it, it, it looks like a sensor. It doesn't even look like a, a lens. It's crazy small. But, you know, I think that the AI360 Pro with its mounting kit for a new construction, I think that is a game changer. And if I was going into a new office build, I think the AI360 Pro of all of these cameras would be the one that I would choose. If I was looking for one to mount in the wall, I would do an AI Pro wide. The biggest issue I'm going to have with any of that, especially mounting it in the wall, is we had a lot of issues with the hub itself. Obviously, during the beginning, I told you we had to RMA one, but during our testing, we had to unplug the USB to one of our hubs over and over and over again. And so I did a little debrief with Sean when we were doing this test, and he's very re weary of putting these in somewhere professionally because if we have to call a client and say, we got to reset the hub. That means you have to drive a truck out there and reset the hub or tell our client to go do that. And if we put these in the reflective ceilings, that's okay to do in an in a acoustic tile ceiling. But what if it's in a hard ceiling and we have to get in the attic and crawl halfway across the building and maybe we can get there, maybe we can't. So, you know, the complexity of the system is something to definitely take into account. I can see a lot of these 360s going out there though. It really is a nice way to discreetly put a 360 camera that gives you a ton of coverage in like a retail space or a doctor's office where you don't want the cameras to be in your face. So that's my review of the AI Theta 360s. I think there's a lot of promise with this line. I, I do like the fact that there are different options with it. I feel like the pros are probably a little bit better choice at this point in time. But let me know how you feel down in the comments below. If you made it this far and you like this kind of video, hit the like and subscribe button and we'll see you guys in the next video.